Hey, Ivan from the EB Stock Channel here, and welcome back to another episode. During the conference call, Elon Musk made it clear that Tesla was cell constrained, and my question is, where is the bottleneck, and how do you fix it? To help answer that question, I've got Rodney Hooper from RK Equity back on the show. But before we begin, thank you to all the Patreons who make these episodes possible, and as always, all content is simply our opinion and not financial advice. Rodney, really appreciate you coming on the show to answer a few quick questions. So there was one aspect of earnings that I really wanted to, or the conference call that I really wanted to run by you. Elon was talking about the constraint of battery cell output. The thing to bear in mind is, is, is that there is fundamentally a constraint on battery cell output. The main reason we have not uh, accelerated um, new products is, like for example, the Tesla Semi, is that we simply don't have enough cells for it. Like we, we, this, if we were to make the semi, like right now, uh, which we, we could eat, we could easily go into production with the semi, but we would not have enough cells for it right now. Um, we will have cells for enough cells for the semi when we are producing um, the Tesla 4680 in volume. Um, but for example, the semi would use typically five times the cell number of cells that a, that a car would use, um, but it would not sell for five times what a car would sell for. So. Uh, it, it kind of doesn't make it would not make sense for us to do the semi right now, but it will absolutely make sense for us to do it as soon as we can um, address the cell production constraint. And my question was, where is this bottleneck? Is it not enough battery cell plants, or is there not enough uh, raw battery materials to feed them? I think uh, for now, it's probably the bottleneck is more at the cell level. And I think coming up, it's going to be the raw materials, which is what we've discussed previously. So I think Drew discussed the ramp up of the 4680 production. So they said they'll be able to meet mass production this year, but it very clearly looks like they are steering expectations for Giga Berlin and Austin into 2022 in sort of a decent ramp up. So when you looked at the cell production, I noticed it clearly said um, 200 gigawatt hours of capacity, I think uh, probably by the end of 22, and, but they would have 100 gigawatt hours of actual cell capacity uh, next year, which is enormous, I have to tell you. I mean, that is that on its own, if it's all high nickel for the semi, the cyber, and for the long range Model Y, then you're talking, you know, nearly... Uh, 85 to um, to 90,000 uh, tons of hydroxide, which is bigger than the entire market in 2020. But wow. uh, I, I noticed uh, someone tweeted, and it looked like uh, Elon Musk tweeted back. It seems that cell, the cell output is the issue. I know they've got Panasonic helping, looking at the 4680. And Elon Musk has said before, the machine that makes the machine and what have you, and, and scaling. So I think it's specifically scaling the 46. 80 production for them because when you look at the cyber in the semi and you and I discussed this before battery day the most critical thing though you know the semi is a very uh, energy density and weight sensitive uh, you know a, a truck it needs the lightest weight with the highest energy density battery so it has to have the 4680 and the cyber I think as well so they they need they need the 4680 up and running and scaling and i guess uh running smoothly and producing at a low enough price to keep margins you know the the one other thing is i don't know if you noticed but it looks like you know they said 50 percent growth so they're kind of guarding 750 800 now as production I, I thought higher but they're definitely cooling off expectations coming out of berlin and austin for this year yeah, I guess with a new factory, a lot of new processes and new battery cells, I mean, it's probably better to sandbag and temper estimates for the time being. It is, but, you know, when you look at the flybys, it looks to be very impressive. So to my mind, it looks to be ready to go by mid-year. I mean, if you look at where we mm -hmm. are in January and how much equipment and staff's going in, so we yep. don't know. I, th I would say it's the production of the 4680 cell that is the bottleneck. I don't know if they could temporarily get cells from uh, LG, you know, or, or you know, exporting out of uh, China 
to sell into Europe. But if they're going to get uh, Brandenburg up and running, my guess is that there's some implications around sell ramp there. Yeah, Elon did mention that, you know, they would want to collaborate with the other, you know, cell manufacturers, LG, Panasonic, and take as many of their cells as possible. In fact, I want to be really clear, Tesla wants to increase purchases from cell suppliers. And we've been very clear with our cell suppliers, uh, you know, whether it be CATL or Panasonic or uh, LG, that we will take as many batteries as they can produce. So, and we, we urge them to increase their uh, production and we will buy as much as they can send to us. Yes, yeah, so, so that makes absolute sense if you're going to ramp Shanghai to the max, to say 500 or 450, 500 this year, um, and then you can use CATL's LFP for the short range and you can use LG. I think they're going to put 811 into the Model Y um, and then export those. But And you could possibly even, once Brandenburg's up and running, you could... Um, you could use LG cells to start in those in those cars, but then I, I guess you're going to put LG under the pump to be producing more. But uh, the aspiration was their own, and the Cyber and the Semi, uh, that definitely needs the 4680. Yep. So the one thing I thought was quite interesting, uh, Ivan, is if you think about it, um, if you are going to then have in 2022 the Cyber ramping and the Semi, and then you've got the Model Y and the Model 3 elsewhere. If you think that uh, Tesla has recently extended its cell contract with uh, Panasonic and it wants to use LG, if they actually produce 100 gigawatt hours of cells in 2022, that's about 1.25 million cars. What is that telling you of their order expectations if they can produce for enough for 1.25 million cars and they will keep buying from Panasonic and LG? Mm. What is their expectation of production in 22? I, I don't know. You tell me, but it looks like quite a big number. Definitely. Now, I was wondering, if you were sitting on the board at Tesla and you had 5 or $10 billion to spend to alleviate this bottleneck in both cell manufacturing and the battery raw materials how would you spend five to ten billion uh that's an interesting question because i think you know it's not as if um throwing i don't know if throwing more money at the 4680 production process can change anything i'm sure they've got the best minds and the best people working round the clock on that so once you have that sort of refined, I'm assuming they could re-roll and, you know, copy-paste that formula into Shanghai, you know, in, into any of the locations that they wanted to produce their own cells. I guess that could take some money, but I, I don't know it's that much. For me... Like could, they build, could they build more battery plants? Yes, yeah, so, but I'm saying once you have the formula for producing, mass producing the 4680 cell, you can copy paste that. And they already have, they raised 12 billion last year. So I'm not sure what they're going to do with that 12 billion. You've already got money in hand. But ultimately, and maybe I, I you know, I sound like a, a broken record and, you know, man, the man with a hammer, the world's a nail. But I, if it, it looks as if they are, you know, if you're really about the business of selling 20 million cars in 2030, you know, we say this over and over again, and you're starting to see prices move now, you need to sort out your raw materials. And what could you do? Say again, you had five or 10 billion. How could you invest that or maybe not even, you know, use that five or 10 billion, but you know, do the streaming deals as seen to borrow money cheaply and give that to some of these raw battery material suppliers to help them out to boost production now to set you up in two, three years? What, what could you do on that front? Yeah, so, so they, 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 take a different, they take different approaches. So it's no secret, you know, Tesla and other OEMs and cell manufacturers and cathode guys are all running around looking for offtake contracts with all of the raw material suppliers. So the penny has dropped. I think Tesla's uh, sort of modus operandi has been if I sign an offtake, the share price runs and then the company can fund itself. So you look at someone like Piedmont, they did the deal. The share has gone up dramatically. They've raised some money. I guess they can raise more. 
to the extent that um, that that is not enough, I'm not sure if you can change it. So, you know, I think Tesla is looking at doing, you know, they already are looking to build a cathode plant and a hydroxide plant in, in the States. So I guess they could flesh that out more. But again, there's no point throwing money at something until you have refined the process in the same way that once you've got the 4680 cell format right, then you can roll it out everywhere in the same way once you have figured out if you want to eliminate some of the uh, hydromet stages in nickel processing, once you've solved that riddle, then they can throw the money at scaling. But I guess you can't chase it any faster than you can chase it and, until you've solved the formula. A bit like I'll throw salt on the clay in Nevada and produce lithium. Mm. If you can do that, then you can scale that. So I, I don't know that, uh, that raising that money would... Um, that there's an obvious place to spend until you have uh, solved the riddle and cracked the codes as to what you want to do. And it, look, we know this is Tesla, right? Look at the casting machines and all the rest. You know, I'm sure they've got already got enough capital and tons of people you know, hired to chase this. So it's now just a question of getting it done. Well, let's wrap up with that. And yeah, I guess we'll talk soon. Thank you. So another great insight from Rodney. And let me know what you guys think. Why is Tesla cell constraint? And how should they alleviate that? Look forward to seeing your responses. Until then, I'll see you guys soon.